Welcome, my friend, to another Lunch and Learn, where today we're going to make a quick protein salad. I know that don't sound like the two go together, protein and salad, but they do. And the beautiful thing is that this is one of the salads that is a part of the meal plan that my coaching client gets. So we're going to dive right on in because your boy is beyond hungry. I got everything set up, but forgot my knife. So this salad is very low cost, first off, and it's super easy to make. I'm using this purple kind of cabbage that comes in the variety pack that you can get from Aldi. So I can make three salads out of that pack and it costs about $3, $4. So that's about a dollar per salad. So it's a low cost, low cost salad. So we're going to get our base in there, get the greens in there first. That's the first one. Then we're going to use this other one. It's kind of like a butter. Um, broccoli, not broccoli. What the heck? My words are not wording right now. You know what this is. So just that simple. We got the base of our salad. We got our greens. Going. Next, we're going to add a half of a cucumber. I used this cucumber on the last salad, so it's already simple. And I'm gonna cut these into fours because I don't like my pieces to be too big, but I like them to still be chunky. Yeah, lettuce, there you go. So I, I, I knew somebody was gonna help me out with what it was. So the beauty of this salad is not only that it's quick, it's going to be very hydrating because of, what is that thing called? My words are not wording today. Cucumber. That's what it's called. Yeah, we're not using spinach today. I'm not a, the biggest fan of spinach salads. And we're going to add this tomato. I'm not going to throw all that away because that's good tomato. So the tomato is also going to add to the hydration of this particular salad. And I love eating salads because it gives you the ability to get your greens in. Greens are very good for detoxifying the body because of the chlorella or the, yeah, the chlorella that's inside of it. The dark stuff, the dark green stuff. So it helps to remove heavy metals, helps to detoxify the blood. So now we got our tomatoes thrown in here. I saved my kitchen scraps from my garden. I used to do that, but right now I'm not heavy into my gardening, so I haven't been doing that as much. Then I don't have any bell peppers, so we're gonna use these sweet peppers instead. And yes, I'm going to leave the seeds in because there are nutrients in the seeds. So this is one of those beautiful salads that is going to be one colorful, but two super nutritious. And as you see, super quick to make. And my clients enjoy it. And we're gonna make a set our own salad dressing out of a few ingredients to give it a little bit of extra flavor. Why am I a skinny guy eating salads? Well, just because I'm skinny doesn't mean that my health isn't a priority. This is a salad that is going to help you regulate your blood Sugar levels is going to help you regulate your blood pressure as well. So you got all of these beautiful peppers going in. Next up, we're going to do an avocado because as you read, we said that it's a protein salad. Most people don't realize that avocados have protein in them. I hope this avocado ain't bad. It's feeling a little mushy. Oh, we got saved. Boom. So a lot of people think that eating plant-based is very expensive. Right now, in total, the bag of avocados that I got cost $5 for six avocados, or it was five avocados. So that's about a dollar an avocado. I got about a dollar's worth of greens in here, so that's $2. The sweet peppers that I bought were, I think, $3, and I've been eating off of them for days. So let's just say 
75 cents worth of avocado of sweet peppers we got a tomato that tomato i think it was like 60 cent a pound so that's less than a dollar's worth of a tomato then we had the cucumber i used half the cucumber so that's less than a dollar's worth of a cucumber so so far we're at about a total of three maybe four dollars now another part of the protein that we're going to add in here i always batch cook my quinoa i cook a big pot of it throughout at the beginning of the week because i know throughout the week i can use it for my bowls when i make roasted veggies when I make my salads, I can throw it in here. And so this is one of the ways that you can save time because one of the excuses that I hear from people all the time is, oh, I don't have time to eat healthy. It's so expensive and it takes too much time. Well, if you batch cook a pot of quinoa, it costs you 20 minutes. You can soak your quinoa. I personally don't. I don't do the sprout it. You can. It, it does make it a little bit more digestible, but I don't have a problem when I don't, so I don't worry about it. So again, this is one of the salads that my clients get in their meal plan when they join my coaching program. So if you're somebody who's battling and is like, hey, I need to do that myself. So the salad's done, salad's made. Now what we're going to do, I would normally also add alfalfa sprouts in here because they're high in protein but I ran out of them when I made my last salad. So now it's time to make the salad dressing. This salad dressing is going to have four ingredients. The first one, we're gonna start off with some red wine vinegar. A lot of people, when they're making their salad dressing, they start off with an avocado oil or an olive oil. Oils, although they do have some health benefits for people that are dealing with high blood pressure, for people that are dealing with diabetes, and being overweight or obese, adding additional oils to your diet is not helpful for you, okay? When you add these additional oils, it's all oils are just liquid fat at the end of the day. I don't care whether it's an avocado oil, a grapeseed oil, or an olive oil. They're all liquid fat, they've been isolated. See, I got the healthy fats because I put a whole avocado in here. So it's got all of the macronutrients plus the fiber that comes along with it. When you isolate the oil, you remove all of those nutrients and all you're left with is the fat. So now your body has to process that. Would you if you, okay, what what if you're trying what if you're trying to gain weight as a vegan? This salad would work perfect. I am actually on a weight gain. So gaining weight as a vegan isn't as hard as most people think. What you have to focus on is eating more calories not just the protein content but the calorie content so we got the red wine vinegar is going to be the base of our then we're going to add a little bit of dijon honey mustard to give it a little flavor and tang and i'm not measuring this stuff then to sweeten it and give it a look to balance out the acidity of the vinegar we're going to add a little bit of organic maple syrup and somebody's in the comments going to say well i'm diabetic i shouldn't have this it's going to be too much sugar shut up no it's not then we're going to add a little black pepper for seasoning and then a dash of salt salt in and of itself is not a bad thing even for people who have high blood pressure you actually need sodium in your body to help balance out the potassium so that you have a balance of opening your blood vessels and constricting your blood vessels. Then we're going to mix it all up, just like so. Okay, use the avocado instead of the olive oils. Yes, absolutely, auntie. Going back to hit. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's the one reason why you don't have to do all of those. So you see, we are probably... 10 minutes into this live or less and I would have been done quicker if I wasn't talking to y'all. Got the right bite. Now, because nobody likes to eat a dry salad, we're going to dump this in on top. 
just like so. Probably could have made a little bit more, but I think that's enough. Voila. Mix this thing up. And now you have a complete salad that's going to give you all a ton of macronutrients, meaning macro, meaning your proteins, your fats, and your carbohydrates, and so many micronutrients between the peppers, the cucumbers, the tomatoes, the quinoa, the avocado. And then because we are not using romaine lettuce, we're actually getting, or you can use agave nectar as well. I don't like agave that much. I prefer the taste of syrup, maple syrup. And because it's organic, I'm not really too concerned about it. And we're using a high nutrient green. And so now this salad is ready to go. I do not measure how much I eat. Look at that rainbow of goodness. You're right. That's it. I could have added some pepetas, but I don't have any. I'm out. Pepetas would have been another great. And then they would have added a little bit of crunch. Pepetas is all, are also good for fighting and eliminating parasites within the body. Now, to go along with this salad, I'm also going to make some pineapple juice some pineapple and ginger juice to help with digestion after the fact. So we're gonna cut this off and I actually may replant this top. So I'm gonna sit this one to the side instead of throwing it in the trash. Do pepetas have mostly protein? So there is that is a great question and I'm glad that you asked it. So what I don't want people to focus on is protein or carbohydrates or fat. I want you to focus on eating a variety of foods that give you all of the nutrients you need. You're going to get all of the protein, the carbohydrates, and the fats when you do that. What people like to do is they like to isolate things. So pepetas, yes, they have protein, but they also have healthy fats, and they also have fiber and carbohydrates. That's why some people will tell you that beans are not a good source of protein. They're mostly carbohydrate. But if you pair that with a quinoa, or something else, you're going to get the balance that you need. So that is one of those limited thinkings or those mindsets that the industry has you focused on all on just isolating things. You don't have to worry about isolation when you're eating with and for variety. Are you tracking? Am, is what I'm saying making sense? If anything that I've said so far so far is making sense, drop a drop a drop your favorite emoji in the comment section. Now I'm saving the skin of this pineapple because I'm going to make a tea with it after the fact. If anything that I'm saying so far is making sense, drop a drop your favorite emoji in the comment section. I should see them emojis flowing. And if it's not, then don't. But if it's making sense, Drop that comment section. Drop it in that comment section. Let me know that you're here with me. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking at you and I'm talking with you because this is a conversation, my friend. So if you have questions about your health, that's why this is called a lunch and learn. We're eating and we're learning. OK, we got some we got some we got them coming through. We got them coming through. I ain't in here by myself. So for the Dr. Sabiites, they're going to say, don't eat pineapple. It's acidic. Well, guess what? I've been eating pineapple for all of this time, and it's actually been very beneficial for me because of the bromelain, the vitamin C, and the other macronutrients that are within it. And it tastes so delicious. And yes, I'm moving kind of quick. I know I sliced this pretty quickly. Don't mind, don't judge me. Now, let's get this dropped in here. Let's get me some ginger in here with it. Bear with me one second. I didn't have all of this stuff prepped for me. 
like I did the salad. I think I want this to be very gingery. So we're going to use this much ginger. And everybody likes to ask, do you take the skin off of your ginger? Why? There's nutrients in the skin. Drop that down. Get that over there. Get this over here. Is it better to cuss and slide up or buy chopped? So I like to cut it myself because anytime you buy things that are free cut, you're going to be paying more because you're paying for the labor of having to cut it. You're also paying for the additional packaging. And typically the fruits that they cut up are the fruits that are at risk of going bad. So I like to buy my own. I like to buy my pineapple a little bit unripe and let it ripen itself so that I can get it exactly like I like it. And now we just wait. And for those that are wondering, I'm using a Nama juicer, one of the best juicers on the market. You see the name right here. You see, I didn't put a whole pineapple in there with no problem. And it's quiet so much so that I'm still able to have this conversation with you while it's going. Now, let me get this area cleaned up a little bit so that I got less to do later on. So this was a quick lunch and learn, an opportunity for you to see how you can eat healthy, one, on a budget, and two, without taking up a bunch of time. Had I not been talking to you, I'd be done already. I'd be sitting down and eating. But I wanted to add you in the process because that's important too. So oftentimes, the reasons that I get from people on why they haven't eaten healthy is, oh, it's too expensive. Oh, I don't have the time. Well, you just saw how we created a complete meal in less than 30 minutes. And that's even with me running my mouth. Now, friend says she gets heartburn and acid when she juices pineapples and other fruits. Should she just use less? Well, if she's getting heartburn I would recommend don't do them. There are other fruits. Not everybody has the same reaction to fruits and vegetables as everybody else. Some people's bodies are just built different and that's okay. So I would just recommend she use a different type of fruit. Fruit detoxes and salad and detoxing isn't comfortable. No, it's not comfortable, but neither is being sick. Neither is having high blood pressure. Neither is, you know what I'm saying, diabetes. Neurop neuropathy is not comfortable at all. Night sweats, all of the things that come along with it. What's in the salad? We've got a couple of different types of lettuces. We've got sweet peppers. We've got quinoa. We've got avocado. We've got tomatoes, cucumber, and our own homemade salad dressing. All right, juice is done. Let's go ahead and get this lifted up so we can get every little last little ounce out of here. I like all of my stuff. Fruit is not cheap, but it's also not expensive. So that pineapple cost me $3, I think. The ginger added with the ginger. So this juice, I just made 35 ounces of juice out of one pineapple and a thumb of ginger. So that was maybe... $3 and some change, $3 and a quarter to make 35 ounces of juice. So this whole meal cost me $7. $7. How is that how is it expensive to eat healthy when you just made a whole meal for $7? Where can you go out on the road? What restaurant can you go to and get a full healthy meal? For seven dollars. Heck, you can't go to McDonald's and get a meal for seven dollars. Even unless you're eating off the dollar menu. But then you got to deal with all of the pain that comes with eating that food. I remember the last time I ate McDonald's. I mean, it's been whew, over 15 years. But last time I ate McDonald's, like I, I, my stomach was messed up afterwards. It took me years to realize I was defeating the purpose of healthy salads. Because I was using processed salad dressing. Yeah. 
that's the case. But you saw we made a salad dressing here with three ingredients for if you add the seasonings. It's super simple. And there are ingredients that you likely already have in your refrigerator. Let me get this juice poured into a jar. Watch how satisfying this is. So one, it gets all mixed up. But I just made 35 ounces of juice for about four for less than four dollars. So there is no excuse for you to say you cannot eat healthy. None whatsoever. If you do, all you're doing is making an excuse. It's expensive to eat healthy conveniently, but not if you make it yourself. Yeah. So if you're buying food out on the road, yes, yeah, expensive. That's that's what they want you to think. That's why a salad at McDonald's costs five dollars. But you can eat off the dollar menu. You can get a burger, some fries, all of that for a dollar. How is that so? Why does it cost more? To have a salad, which uses less resources than it does to have a burger. Why is that? Because they want you to eat the unhealthy foods so that you end up on the medications that you will end up on for life. You see these pharmaceutical companies and the doctors that promote the pharmaceutical companies have a vested interest in you being on these medications. It's how they make their money. I'll say that again for somebody who wasn't listening. The companies that make these medications and the doctors that prescribe them have a vested interest in you staying on those medications because it's how they make their money. The pharmaceutical companies make a large markup when they put it on market and the doctors get a kickback from the pharmaceutical companies for prescribing the medicines. Hmm. You wonder why your doctor's always pushing more medications. And then most of the medications need a second medication to deal with the side effects of the first medication. Sounds like a racket to me. Sounds like a racket to me. So the way you can take control of your health and your dollars is by making the conscious effort to eat whole foods that come from plants. So I talk about the six pillars of health. These are the foundation to you improving your health no matter where you are. The first is to detoxify your life. You detoxify your life by removing processed foods, removing GMO, removing the toxic chemicals that you're putting on your body, your deodorants, your lotions, your hair sprays, shampoos, cleaning supplies. You have to detoxify your life. Step one. Step two. Eat nutrient-rich foods. What are nutrient-rich foods, coach? Nutrient-rich foods are whole foods that come from plants. Just that simple. Whole foods that come from plants. And what is a whole food? Something that when you look at it, it looks like as close to its original form as possible. You saw we put tomatoes in here. We didn't use tomato paste. You saw we put quinoa in here, which is a whole grain. You saw we put lettuce. Whole foods, very simple. Now they can be cooked or raw. Eating more raw is more beneficial, of course. The third pillar of health is to stay hydrated. I'm making sure that I stay hydrated, one, by eating high water content vegetables and fruit, like that tomato, the cucumber that's in here, the salad greens, high water content. I'm going to be having some juice that's going to help with that hydration. And then drinking enough water to help flush the system and fill in the gaps. The fourth step, and this is the one that most people miss, is daily movement and exercise. You have to move your body so that you get the lymphatic system working. The lymphatic system is the waste system of the body to remove the cellular waste and the toxins that get built up because that's what the lymphatic system does. Movement is also going to make sure that your cardiovascular system and your blood flow is working correctly. It's going to help make sure that your arteries and your blood vessels don't get stiff 
because when they get stiff, they're not able to expand and contract like they need to to ensure your proper blood level, not blood levels, blood pressure levels. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Also, the more movement you do, the more calories you burn, the more calories you burn, the more glucose you use, the more glucose you use, the less insulin resistance you have. Hmm. We just talked about high blood pressure and diabetes all in one take. Number four is to get, no, we're on number four, we're on number five now. Get enough quality sleep. You can eat all the healthy food in the world. You can do all the movement in the world. If you're not getting quality sleep, you're not giving your body the time that it needs to do its reparative processes. Our bodies repair itself during deep sleep. So if you're not getting enough quality sleep, you're missing a huge portion of what you need for your body to be able to do what it's designed to do. And that's heal you. You don't heal you. The foods don't heal you. Your body does it by itself. You just have to create the environment where it will do that. Am I, are you tracking with me? Is what I'm saying making sense? If what I'm saying is making sense, drop your favorite emoji in the comment section right now. I need to know you're here with me and not just watching me. I need to see some I need to see some emojis before we go on to or yeses. I like the yeses. Got the got a hug emoji. Now, the sixth and the most important pillar above all of the rest are to properly manage your mindset and stress levels. And when I say manage one of the ways you manage your stress levels is to eliminate as much stress as you possibly can. When you eliminate stress, now you lower your cortisol levels. Why do you want to lower your cortisol levels? Your cortisol, when you have excess cortisol in the body, one, it makes your heart rate increase. Two, when you don't process the excess cortisol, it is transferred and stored as fat. Hmm. We're trying to get rid of fat because we talked about earlier how fat is a problem for people with insulin resistance. So you see how by focusing on these six pillars, you remove all of the instances or the things in your life that are leading to poor health, low energy. Excess fat accumulation, diabetes, high blood pressure, and a list of other problems that come from having those things. You're lowering your inflammation rate just by focusing on those six pillars. Now, if you feel like, hey, all of this sounds good, coach, but I don't know where to start, you can get help. Send me a DM or you can comment the word program and I'll send you something. Click the link in my bio, all of that good stuff like there. And you can get help because the salad that we made today, the juice that we made today. These are things that my clients get as a part of their meal plan. So I'll answer three questions. So if you're on TikTok, you got to click the link in my bio because I don't have an automated system that works on TikTok yet. I may have to get mini chat to see if it works. So Miss Gigi, click the link in my bio and you can directly schedule that free discovery call. So when you click or comment the word program, what's going to happen is you're going to get an automated message if you're on Instagram and you can click that link to book a free discovery call. The discovery call is our opportunity to go over your situation and see if what I do makes sense for you, if even if you're a good fit. It's that simple. But I've talked as much as I can talk because I got to eat now because my stomach is yelling at me. So I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me on this lunch and learn, making a quick protein salad. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.